Hello everybody and welcome back to the CAE YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm again joined by my fabulous colleagues uh, Matt and Kevin and we're going to talk a little bit today around uh, dev test production application handling inside of Azure landing zones. So without further ado let's get into uh, the, the meat of today's uh, talk. So as we have I said there just a minute ago, we're talking around the applications, but we do realize that some people might be wondering, how do I handle dev test prod of the platform side of it itself? So how do I test Azure landing zones in terms of my management groups, my policies? And we have some guidance for this already uh, available in a, in a document called Testing Approach for Enterprise Scale that you can uh, check out in that short link there that talks about how to test the platform. But today we're talking around that application and workload uh, dev test production handling. So Matt, do you want to give us a bit of an intro into what, you know, what we're talking around here for the application? Sure. So when we talk about <clears throat> dev test prod in terms of ALZ, we're really talking about the governance of those workloads. Um, and if you remember the ALZ management group hierarchy, which is on the screen now, your applications live under the landing zones management group. And we, by default, we give you two um, management groups, corp and online. Now, the reason that they're different is because there's a policy difference between those two management groups. For example, in Corp, uh, by default, you're not allowed to use public IP addresses, whereas in online, you are. So that we can see that we create management groups because we need different um, governance frameworks for uh, these types of workloads. So if we then fast forward then to making decisions about where an application subscription would live. So let's say you've got an application subscription, sorry, an application with three subscriptions, dev, test and prod. Where's that going to live, right? Where do we put that? That's a good question. First and foremost, I think you should ask yourself what the governance model is of that application. Is it is it this? Will it fit under one of my existing archetypes? Right. Um, if the answer is yes, then then put it under that archetype. Um, if production has the same governance model as dev and test, then put them all together. Right? There's no reason to create different management groups there. Um, however, if your dev environment isn't compatible with uh, your production policies, then that's where uh, you should use sandboxes. Now, there are many reasons for this, but principally it's the use of services which are not, aren't, aren't yet sanctioned in production. So you want to use version two of your app, you want to use a new service, can't put it under the production management group hierarchy, got to use sandboxes. So in short, it's a summary of the decision, mod, decision process that you should go through when you're thinking about uh, placing your workloads. So Kevin, Talk to us a bit about sandboxes. How should we use them? Of course. So the sandbox really is, like you said, it's an environment where developers have a bit more kind of freedom and autonomy. Um, and that's a real kind of underlying principle behind ALZ. It's giving developers and application teams the ability to work in the way that best suits them. And sandbox is a part of that model. So as you've already mentioned, within the landing zones, traditionally, you're going to have a lot more kind of enforced governance that are there to help protect you against things like data loss. Um, and to ensure that you're compliant with all your regulatory requirements. Sandbox is really designed to mirror that, but in a way that doesn't get in the way of developers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll generally try to recommend that you put the same types of policies in there, but rather than in signing them in a deny mode or a deploy if not exist mode, you might put them in just an audit mode. And that allows developers to have a bit more freedom over how they experiment with different services. Um, but also to actually evaluate how that environment is going to look once they move it into production. Um, so it's really a great area for developers to experiment. Um, you know, this is often done, you know, when you look at some of the policies, not everything has a real kind of audit equivalent to. So we often assign the same policy, but in the assignment, we set enforcement mode to do not enforce. Mm -hmm. And that effectively puts it in an audit mode. Um, but you know, you've also got to think about what happens when you've got lots of different types of policies there, different groupings for different landing zones. Um, so in the kind of the default, we have a single sandbox. But you know, one of the other options we have is that we actually create a replica effectively of what you've got under landing zones. So using the classic example of Corp and Online, you know, here you can see how we've expanded the sandbox management group hierarchy to include equivalents to Corp and Online. And again, we're taking the same approach in terms of how we control those policies, um, but we're putting them into the audit only mode. Now there might be a few variations on this. So because it's a sandbox and because you want to reduce the risk of data loss, 
there are a couple of policies you might want to apply there. So ones that we often see customers using are things like deny VNet peering. So you know, each subscription within the sandbox operates in complete isolation from the others. Um, the other thing you might want to do is to actually deny connectivity to on-premise. So you might block things like VPN gateways or express route connections so that you know, that environment truly stays isolated, again, reducing risk. So you know, let's have a look at how that might look in practice when we actually look at this in the context of the broader sort of ALZ architecture. So here you can see the traditional ALZ hierarchy. And here we've got an example application called App A. Yeah, App A is very much the kind of the typical scenario for most customers where development, test, and prod all sit under the same governance model. And they can therefore all sit just under the standard corp management group under landing zones. Um, but that's not going to work for everybody. You might have an application, in this case, App B where the development environment, actually, the developers need a bit more freedom. You know, they're still experimenting a lot. And before they promote their application up into test and prod, they want to have a bit more freedom to experiment with new features and new capabilities within the Azure platform. And then the third scenario is App C. So App C, we talk about the idea of a scenario where it's just purely experimentation. So we've got an MVP type environment. There it is. Uh, we've got an MVP type environment where the developer is going to be, so they haven't built the test or production workload yet, um, but they're still very much looking at sort of just working out how the application looks in the environment. You know, the expectation for App C is that it would evolve probably into App B. And then eventually at the point where you're kind of in a bit more of a stable environment, you move to the same pattern that App A is currently showing us. That's some really interesting points there. I suppose taking that on from where, where we've talked around those different applications and, and you know, you maybe have gone through different development cycles or different maturity levels of those applications, you may get to that point where you go, okay, well, my, my app isn't compliant, right? My sandbox app that I've tried out my version two or trying a new service out for my application, it's not, not compliant with the policies that we have applied there. So, you know, what do we do? And I think this is a really important point, right? There's a few options that you as a customer uh, have in this space. You know, I think number one is you can create exemptions, right? So exemptions, not exceptions, very key to call out there. Exemptions are like temporary waivers or maybe permanent waivers um, with a detailed reason and, you know, justification of why this isn't compliant with the policy and why that's okay and something you would work with the platform team to put in place uh, upon your subscription or maybe even uh, more refined scope, like an individual resource group inside your subscription. Um, but, you know, that's one option you've got. Uh, another option you've got is, you know, modify those policies in production, you know, work with your uh, platform team to understand that actually the policy that's being applied doesn't really work for us as a um, application team and these are the reasons why and you may find that that actually applies to more people in production and you're just the first people to find that as part of your application uh, workload so you may need to modify that policy in production to infect that entire archetype so in the entire corp landing zone or the entire online landing zone and then the, the fourth one you've got here uh, sorry, the third one is a new archetype, right? You you may decide that actually corp and online may not be uh, suitable and we need something different, right? We need uh, a new uh, archetype to sit alongside there that has a completely different governance model that we want to support. Um, and obviously you would apply the, the policies that are relevant there and again, working with that platform team. Uh, and then finally, and I think that the least preferable for most application teams is modifying the application, right? So there may be um, a reason or a governance or a regulatory compliance framework that means what you've designed just cannot work for the business and the requirements that are put upon them. And the platform team should work with you to understand that, you know, these are the bits you need to tweak to make it compliant. Like it might be as simple as, using private endpoints for all of your PaaS services, um, right? And that may be a small change that you need to make that is well within the the, uh, the capabilities of the application so that you are therefore compliant with the policies and the business can move on. Um, but yeah, these are the four options that we commonly see customers go through um, and definitely starting with exemptions or moving towards the fourth option is the least preferable. So Matt, if we just do a bit of a, a summar summary and a wrap up of this, you know, what are some of the key takeaways from today's talk that we've given? So I think it's important to consider management groups as units of governance instead of units of 
organization or, or or even of our back i think generally do our back at the subscription level can can prevent that kind of management group sprawl that, that we sometimes see um and there are definitely some anti-patterns as well that we should we should come on to right so if we click the slide onto the next uh animation what we don't want you to do is that right we don't want you to sit and do pro dev, test and dev underneath cork and online we've seen problems when customers have tried this and and it just doesn't scale. Uh, and then they try and kind of flip prod dev desk upside down and put the archetypes underneath, and then that doesn't scale either. So try and avoid doing that. You may, end, if you do go down this route, you may end up with lots of exemptions or exclusions to policies to try and get um, things working as you want to. Um, the other thing that we can do is um, some customers use uh, Azure policy for operational reasons, like for enforcing things like Azure backup. So if you do that, some customers want a different policy for tests as they do for production. Um, we'd recommend still not creating a management group to do this. Um, instead, you can use uh, policy filtering by the tag of the resource. So um, you do have to be careful, though. We, we don't recommend you do this for any policy that is um, for governance of the environment. We only recommend you do this for policies that are for operational reasons. So don't do this with your PCI DSS um, assignments okay just do this with uh, stuff if, with backup and be aware that anybody that can modify the tags can change the effect of the policy um, also using Azure policy to control things like Azure backup is a fairly blunt tool so maybe a better option there is to talk to your application teams if you're the platform team talk to your application teams and 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 understand that it's better to deploy the backup with the workload um, so they have more control over it Absolutely. And I think we have a lot of these documented, right, Matt, uh, in some guidance we've already got published inside the Enterprise Scale FAQ. So uh, for any of you there, check out the link uh, that's just popped up below um, and you can get some guidance about what we've talked about today in a, in a more documented format and, you know, maybe make it part of your, uh, app, your design documents and share with the wider teams and uh, share this video with them. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Um, and that brings us to the end. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, we really hope you've enjoyed it. We'd love to see and hear your feedback. So um, please leave a comment below. Um, if you'd like to see more videos, please check out the link, aka.ms slash CAE YouTube. See you next time.